And now on to our dinosaur of the day, Albertosaurus, which was a request from the Dinosaur Taylor via YouTube. So thank you. The name Albertosaurus means lizard from Alberta, and it's a tyrannosaurid that lived in the late Cretaceous in what is now Alberta, Canada. It was first discovered in 1884 as part of an expedition by the Geological Survey of Canada, led by the geologist Joseph Burr Tyrrell. They didn't have the right kind of equipment, so they could only get part of the skull instead of the nearly complete skull. And Tyrrell was 25 at the time and looking for coal when he found Albertosaurus in the Horseshoe Canyon formation of Red Deer River in Alberta, Canada. Then in 1889, Thomas Kessmer Weston found a smaller, incomplete skull nearby. Both Albertosaurus skulls were assigned by Edward Drinker Cope in 1892 to Laleps Incrassatus, though Charles Marsh had changed Laleps to Dryptosaurus in 1877 because Laleps was the name of a mite. Cope, however, did not accept Marsh's name, probably because of the Bone Wars. And then Lawrence Lamb used the name Dryptosaurus instead of Laleps when describing the bones in 1903 and 1904. He called them Dryptosaurus incrassatus. Then Henry Fairfield Osborne said that Dryptosaurus was based on generic Tyrannosaurid teeth, so the Albertosaurus bones could not be for sure referred to as Dryptosaurus. Also, their skulls were different from the type species of Dryptosaurus. Henry Fairfield Osborne named Albertosaurus in a one-page note at the end of his description of T. rex in 1905. And the type species is Albertosaurus sarcophagus, and the species name means flesh-eating. Both Albertosaurus specimens are stored in the Canadian Museum of Nature in Ottawa. Later, some scientists thought that it could be a nomum dubium because the holotype was damaged. Then in 2010, Thomas Carr established the holotype and paratype, and found that they had a unique common trait of an enlarged pneumatic opening in the back of the palatine bone. In 1928, William Parks described a new Albertosaurus species named Albertosaurus artunguis, based on a partial skeleton with no skull that Gus Lindbald and Ralph Hornell found in 1923 near Red Deer River, but since 1970 it's been considered to be the same as Albertosaurus sarcophagus. Other Albertosaurus species have been named, but they're now considered to be synonyms, nomina dubia or no longer assigned to Albertosaurus. Charles Sternberg found another Tyrannosaurus skeleton in 1913 in Dinosaur Park formation in Alberta. Lawrence Lamb named it Gorgosaurus libertus in 1914. More specimens were found later in Alberta and Montana. Dale Russell said it was a junior synonym of Albertosaurus, based on not having significant differences. So Gorgosaurus libertus was renamed in 1970 to Albertosaurus libertus, and it still had an age difference of several million years, which is why the species is different. Philip Curry said in 2003, after comparing Tyrannosaurus schools, that the two species were distinct and recommended that they be separate genera, like Displatosaurus and Tyrannosaurus. Good old splitting versus lumping, striking again. <laughs> yeah. So some Albertosaurian bones have been found in Alaska and New Mexico, and Curry suggested that there would be more clarification once they were fully described, but not everyone agrees. Barnum Brown found a large group of Albertosaurus in 1910 at a different quarry along Red Deer River. He didn't have enough time to collect all the bones, so instead he and his team collected some bones from the individuals they could identify. They became part of the American Museum of Natural History collection, and there were at least nine individuals in the quarry. Phil Curry relocated the bone bed in 1996 based on just four photographs of Barnum Brown's trip. In 1997, the Royal Tyrrell Museum found the bone bed again, and from 97 to 2005 found 13 more individuals, including bones from a two-year-old and an adult, an old adult. None of them were complete skeletons. They kept excavating until 2008 and estimated there were at least 12 individuals in the bone bed, and at most 26. A total of 1,128 bones were secured, which is the largest number of theropod fossils that we know of from the Cretaceous. The Dry Island Bone Bed, where 26 Albertosaurus were found, consisted of one 28-year-old, eight adults between ages 17 to 23, seven sub-adults between 12 and 16, and six juveniles between 2 and 11 years old. Most of the known Albertosaurus specimens were around the age 14. The oldest and largest Albertosaurus was 28 years old and 33 feet or 10 meters long, and the youngest was 2 years old and 6.6 .6 feet or 2 meters long and weighing 110 pounds or 50 kilograms. Just a little guy. Yeah. By age two, Albertosaurus is larger than any other predator in the area, aside from adult Albertosaurus, so if they made it to age two, they tended to live until they were fully grown. Those adults, they had a higher mortality rate, possibly from stress for competing for mates and resources or the stress of procreation. Albertosaurus grew most rapidly between ages 12 to 16, which is a similar growth rate to similar-sized tyrannosaurids. And during this growth period, Albertosaurus gained 250 pounds per year. No herbivore bones have been found, so the bone bed was probably not a predator trap. And because of this, Curry said it was evidence of pack behavior, though other scientists think that they may have come together by drought or flood. 
In 2010, Curry said they may have come together for other causes other than pack behavior, such as a slowly rising water level in an extended flood. They may have also been like Komodo dragons, where they go into a feeding frenzy, which leads to some of them being killed or cannibalized. Younger Albertosaurus had longer legs than adults and were probably fast, and Curry hypothesized that the juveniles drove prey towards the slower adults. They probably were not too fast as an adult, and if they fell, they would have been badly injured. They may have walked as fast as 8 to 13 miles per hour, or 14 to 21 kilometers per hour. They lived in a semi-tropical environment with lots of vegetation, and prey included hadrosaurs, ceratopsians, and ornithomimids. They had 58-plus banana-shaped teeth, and they had at least one replacement tooth for each tooth. They had a maximum bite force of 3,413 newtons. And the teeth were serrated, and they used a grip-and-rip approach to cut through the flesh and bone. And they could crunch through bone. They may have also used a bite-and-slice way of hunting. Biting flesh puts a stress on Albertosaurus' teeth, and William Abler suggested that Albertosaurus had a line of serrations on its teeth, ampullas, to keep the teeth from cracking. And these are round voids at the base of the crack-like serration on the tooth that helped Albertosaurus' bite be stronger. Albertosaurus may have bit each other's faces. One was found with marks on its lower jaw, so again, it's hard as an adult. <laughs> in 2009, scientists said that smooth-edged holes in the jaws of Albertosaurus and other tyrannosaurids may have been caused by a parasite similar to Trichinomus gallinae, which infects birds. They may have bitten each other and spread the infection, and it would have been difficult to eat food. Yeah, I could imagine if your jaw is infected and growing holes that eating would be a little painful. Definitely. It's like having cavities in your jaw itself. Yeah, that would be horrible. So again, Albertosaurus was about 30 feet or 9 meters long and somewhere as big as 33 feet or 10 meters long. They had a large head and long tail to help balance and a short S-shaped neck. The skull is about 3.3 feet or 1 meters long. And they had short bony crests above the eyes that may have been brightly colored, possibly to attract mates. They weighed between 1.3 and 1.7 tons. They were bipedal with two-fingered hands, and they had four-toed feet, and the first digit, the hallux, was short and couldn't reach the ground. They're part of the subfamily Albertosaurinae in the family Tyrannosauridae, and they tend to have more slender builds, smaller skulls, and longer leg bones compared to dinosaurs in the other subfamily Tyrannosaurinae. Albertosaurus was about half the size of T. rex, so smaller than T. rex, but still large for its ecosystem, and it lived a few million years before T. rex. So Tyrannosauridae means tyrant lizards, and they're theropods. Two subfamilies consist of up to 11 genera. The number of genera is controversial, and some people think it's as low as three. They lived in the late Cretaceous in Asia and North America. They were usually the largest predators around, and the largest species was T. rex. Not many complete specimens have been found from known tyrannosaurids, but many genera have complete skulls, and some of them had crests above their eyes. They also had small arms, but long legs, and juvenile tyrannosaurids had longer legs, which was more suited to running fast, but then that changed as adults. 